Alright, so what we're learning today is the pinnacle of Unit 2, okay? Um, it can be a little intimidating when you first try it for sure, but I'll tell you this. There is at least a process to go about it, okay? And the process, if followed, you can get to the correct answer. The hard part about this is that which process is the easiest, okay? Some of you might try something totally different than what someone else does as far as through the process itself, and you're going to see what I'm talking about here soon. But if you get more practice, it will become easier the more problems you do. This one does require practice, okay? It does require some repetition. Um, let's go ahead and begin. First of all, what we're going to look at today are two things. They're called row reduced, or sorry, reduced row echelon form, which is right here, and then row echelon form. So echelon is just a fancy word for a formation. Okay? So the echelon is, you see those ones in a diagonal? <laughs> this is the echelon piece. Okay? And row is only going to concentrate on making the bottom corners zero. Whereas reduced row, not only does the bottom corners, but it also does the top corners zero as well. Okay? So, and what this revolves around is, the things that you're going to be doing is, you're going to be doing multiplication, you're going to do swapping, you're also going to do addition and subtraction. Okay? And it's basically manipulations to the equations that will help you get to your final answer so that it's in this ones and zeros format. Okay? So let me pull this up just real quick. Okay, so we have multiplication, addition, like I said, and subtraction. Okay. Um, to me, I believe division also occurs with multiplication, but instead of dividing something by two or dividing something by two, I think we should be multiplying by one half for today. So I think you should try to steer closer, more, more toward the multiplication side rather than division. And you'll see why what I'm talking about when we start our problems. Okay? Addition and subtraction. I think you should try to add more than subtract. And this is what I mean. Whenever I'm adding a negative, it's the same as subtracting over here. That's easy to understand. But when I'm subtracting a negative, I'm actually adding. A lot of mistakes get uh, happen here. So again, it's easier just to add. And then the one that a lot of people overlook that's very, very helpful. I think this is the most helpful one when it comes to trying to make it the easiest way possible, people overlook swapping. Okay. All right. So let's let's see what we're talking about. So we recently did equations that look like this: three x plus four y is equal to one. Negative three x plus two y is equal to twenty-three. And believe it or not, this is exactly what we're still doing. Okay? So you can use the argument mathematicians are lazy. We don't want to write out the x. We don't want to write out the y. So this mathematician, Gaussian, came up with this method to solve systems without using any variables. Okay? But he understood that they have to be assigned specifically in some kind of organized fashion. So all of these are our x's. All of these perfectly in a column are our y's. And all of these are the constants or the numbers that they're equal to. So there is an organization for sure. OK, here we go. For the sake of getting an answer, and also for the sake of <clears throat> understanding what it's our goal is, what I want to do is I want to 
to quickly put this problem into the calculator together with you. Okay? So here we go. Follow me. Again, half the, cal half the test is non-calculator. So we've got to be good at both. So new document, add a calculator page, and we can press menu 3 for algebra, solve systems of equations, and solve the system of equations. We have two equations, and they're going to be 3x plus 4y is equal to 1. Kick down and do negative 3x plus 2y is equal to 23. And I get my answers are negative 5 and 4. Okay? So over here, back over here, I'm going to quickly write the answers that we're looking for are x is negative 5 and y is 4. Otherwise, you can write it like that as far as your solution to the system. Okay? Alright, a new way that we're going to see today is this format right here, and it's called an augmented <coughs> matrix. It's when you've included the constants. Okay? So, what this used to be called a two by two system. It was two equations with two variables. But as an augmented matrix, it's called a two by three system. Two rows, row one and row two, and three columns. Are we good? Okay. So now I'm going to show you with the calculator how you can use augmented matrices to get still to this answer of negative five fourths. Okay, so this is the answer that we're trying to, excuse me, we're trying to get to. Here we go. We're going to go back to the calculator and go ahead and follow me, please. You built this matrix from the equation. So let's say, going back, let's say you were given this and I told you to build the augmented matrix. You would line up the x's and the y's and you would go to that form right there. Okay? And then using the calculator, <coughs> you do the following. So R R E F, go ahead and type that out. And notice I'm way down here where my keyboard is at. And I'm typing R R E F. Reduced row echelon form. Okay? And then press parentheses. And now what we're going to do is we're going to enter our augmented matrix. So we're going to press this button right here to the right of 9. And then we're going to press that button right there in the middle. That's a 3 by 3 matrix. Okay? And when I press enter, this pops up. See, but I don't want a 3 by 3. What do I want? A 2 by 3. So I'm going to do two rows by three columns and then just press enter and it will show up as an augmented matrix. Okay? Now, I'm going to put in the numbers of the coefficients and the constants that I had from my original problem. And when I press enter, there's my answer. Let's see how do we interpret this answer. Okay? So the answer is, first of all, you will get this shown up. This is like your notes already. It has the echelon diagonal of 1, and it has both below this diagonal and above all zeros. And your answers are this last one right here. The x is 5, or negative 5, just like over here, and the y is 4, just like over here. Okay? And that is because the original column 1 was x, the column 2 was xy. So the answers will be over here listed in your in your solution matrix. Okay? Questions right now. Okay, so this is huge what I'm about to show you now. With this being our answer, you either have no solutions, infinite solutions, or one solution. With this being our answer, which of these three do you think it is? One solution. Yeah, one solution right there. 
And here's how you can tell. You can sometimes see these on ACT tests as well. The way you can tell if it's going to be 1, 0, or infinite, it's at the bottom corner of this echelon. So it's this number right here. Okay? If it's 1, then it's one solution. Okay? If it's something other than 1, like pick a number, any number, 12. Let's say it was 12. Then it's going to be either one of these. And the way you find out is you set a little equal sign between those last two bottom numbers. And you ask yourself the question, does 12 equal 4? No. So it would be no solution. If it was 4, then what would it be? Infinite solutions, because 4 equals 4. Now let me try to get you a trick, a trick question. What if on this matrix, this 4 was actually a 1? Still one solution. Even though this is true, it's not infinite solutions, because that will only happen if this 1 was a different number. You with me? But what I have highlighted as green, if that's a 1, no matter what, it will be a solution, just one solution. <coughs> okay? All right. So, <coughs> what just happened via the calculator, instantly, just like that, we're going to learn how to do by hand today. Okay? All right. So let's go to the problem. And here's the road map, guys. This is the road map. You are here. Oops. This is where you start. And the road map is to go down, right, up, and then we'll stop for this one right here. Just like over here on the second one that we're going to do together, this one's a hefty one, we'll start at the upper right hand corner. The road map is down like this, ending at 1 down here. Okay. All the while, when we go through all of this, my goal is to make this matrix, this 2 by 3 augmented matrix, I want it to become What was the what were the answers? Negative five and four. I want it to become that. Okay? Here we go. You have to be very neat, very methodical, okay? My goal as I go through this is to do one at a time. So my goal is to make three into what number right now? Zero. Not zero, but one. I wanted to make the echelon, that diagonal of ones. Okay, so here we go. How could we make row one? How could we make row one? How could we alter row one to where that three becomes one? I could multiply by one third. Divide by three is the same thing, but I'm going to put multiply by one third. Here we go. So if I multiplied one third of row one, well it what it will do is it will now create, and let me do this with colors. Nothing happened to row two. Nothing happened to row two. But what happened to row one was the following. This became one, this became four thirds, and this became one third. Okay, first step done. Remember the road map. This is good. What's our next number that we're going to try to change? Negative this negative 3 right here. Because remember the road map. We're going down like that. Okay? Now here we go. If I'm going to change something, this is huge. Change to 1. Okay, if I'm going to change to 1. Chances are that I'm going to multiply or divide. Okay? The chances are that I'm going to multiply or divide. 
chances are I'm going to change or multiply or divide the same function that I'm looking at. But here comes the more involved part, okay? If you're going to change a number to zero, you're going to add or subtract two different equations, two separate equations. <clears throat> For instance, watch what I'm about to do. I want to make this negative 3 into a 0. I can't multiply by 0. I can't. I need to change something to 0 by adding or subtracting other equations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take row 1, which is 1 4 thirds and 1 third, and I'm going to multiply it by 3. You see what I'm doing? Because that first number is now a 3, a positive 3. So let me do a little bit of scratch work. This right here that I'm highlighting, if I multiply it by 3, I would make it 3, 4, and 1. That's just scratch work out to the side. But I want you to see it. Because when I add row 1 with row 2, what happens whoops, to those 3's? They eliminate. they eliminate and they cancel to what? 0. So I, I'll say this, I've said this before this year and I'll say it for the rest of the year. Cancellation to forms of 0 are with adding and subtracting. Cancellations to 1 are with multiplication and division. Okay. So here we go. <clears throat> so this just happened, and let's see what's changed. Well, the first line stayed the same. Even though I multiplied by, uh, by 3, I didn't change it. I just used that little piece so that I could add it to row 2. So what would I get as a result? What is 3 plus that negative 3? I got 0. What is 4 plus this 2? 6. And what is the 1 plus the 23? 24. Notice what I'm doing each step of the way. I'm going through, again, this road map, and I'm creating 1's and zeros where they belong. And so far, I've got two of them done. <coughs> I just need to do two more. Okay? Here we go. I'm wanting to make what number change next. Which number am I going to choose? Four thirds or six? Six. six? six, because of the road map, right? So let's choose six. And we're trying to make it into a what? One. One. So what could you do to either row 1 or row 2 to make this 6 become 1? Multiply by 1 sixth. Okay, here we go. I'm going to do 1 sixth of row 2. And again, in red are the changes that I'm showing you that are occurring. So I got, so this will become, I'm going to put an arrow, and then let's start it over here. This will become the following. So row 1 is still this. Nothing changed with row 1. But my row 2 changed to 1 6 times 0 is still 0. 1 6 times 6 is 1. And what's the last number? 4. So we're almost there, guys. We now have this one right here. So we just have to change this 4 thirds to what? Zero. And then we're done. That's when our answer will pop out and you'll see what x equals and what y equals. Okay? Alright, here we go. I want to change four thirds. Yes? It does. So watch, check it out. So one sixth times zero remained as 0. 1 6 times 6 became 1. And then 1 6 times 24 became 4. Okay? 
So, yeah. Okay, so this this is right here. We're about to do another one of these right now, but this is the big. This is the confusing part that most people struggle with. Okay, and this is what I'll say: if you have to do scratch work, which I was one of those people when I first learned it, like you're learning it today, I had to do scratch work off to the side. Please do it. Okay, three times row one. That's this. Three times row one is three, four, one. Do you agree? Okay. And we're going to add row two. Okay, so let me highlight this real quick. We're going to add these two together. Casey, what's my row two as of right now? Right here. What's my row two? This is where it's at, guys. Because if you need to do the scratch work off to the side, Please do it to the side and don't include it in all your other progression. Okay? But you can do scratch work. That's fine. What do these become? Um, zero. zero. What are these? Six. Six. And what are these? 24. 24. So, guys, this change right here that just happened created this new row. That's, That's a huge O moment. Okay? So, now... You keep the same row one. Even though you used it, even though you used it to add to row two, your whole goal with this operation was to change to a new row two because you were trying to create that zero. You with me? And I told you when you're creating zeros, you're going to have two equations and one might be a totally different equation that doesn't change just like Katie said, but we're using it so we can add to the one that we want to change to become zero. Okay? That's a huge O moment, okay? All right, so let's get back. What am I going to do to my running answer right now to make that four thirds become zero? <laughs> Subtract four thirds from what? Not that. If you want to do addition, uh, what you'd have to do is add uh, negative four thirds row two. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Slow down. Negative four thirds row two. Let's do the scratch work as we go. Okay. So negative four thirds row two is this. It's zero times negative four thirds. 1 times negative 4 thirds, and 4 times negative 4 thirds. So right now, this right here that Aiden just said that we should do is here. That's my scratch work. Keep going. And we're going to add what? We're going to add row 1. Row 1 is 1 4 thirds and 1 third. And this is why I keep saying I think you should try to add opposite signs rather than trying to subtract because it gets a little bit confusing when you try to subtract it. Okay? What does the first number stay as? One. You with me? What does the second number become? Zero. And negative sixteen thirds plus one third is what? Negative fifteen thirds which becomes negative five. So what did we do just now? We took negative 4 thirds, multiplied it by row 2, and then we added row 1 to that <coughs> to get this new row 1, okay? which is down here, which is 1, 0, negative 5. Row 2 stayed the same. Even though we used it, we weren't changing row 2. And it takes about three problems for you to understand it. So if you don't get it this first time, no worries, guys. No worries. This is my solution now. I have one answer. And it's x equals this and y equals that. Done. You know what I mean? So a lot of those steps and work, that's part of your quiz 
You know what I mean? Like if it's a 10, 15 point question, which they will be for things like this, it all comes from all the work that we did. Okay? Questions. If you, the better questions you have, I promise the easier it's going to be when you start to do it on your own. Okay? But I want you to analyze this with a fine tooth comb and dissect it and really try to see why am I doing that? Why is that probably the easier way and whatnot? Yes? Reduced row <coughs> gets you the full answer all the way. The row, um, so the reduced row echelon form will get your final answer, or the row echelon form doesn't get the final answer. It gets like the in between answers per se. So why would you ever do row? It's just there's things in upper level math that you would use it for that you it's not applicable right now per se. So here's the thing. The process to get it doesn't completely give you the answers, but at least it starts the process of what we're really trying to do, which is row reduced echelon form, or reduced row echelon form. Okay? All right, here we go. What's my dimensions of the matrix that I have? Three by four. This is a three by four matrix. That means I have three rows and four columns. How many variables do I have? Three. X, Y, and Z. You with me? Here we go. Row one, row two, and row three. Now I'm going to try to keep my scratch work all over here, just kind of on its own, and keep the work that I want you to show me on quizzes and tests and whatnot all over here on the left side of this line, okay? All right, let's start our voyage, if you will. We start here. Is it, what, is it the number that we want it to be? Yeah, it's a one. We want that to be one, because again, we want these to end up as ones, but that doesn't mean that this is my answer right now because these must be what? Zeros. Okay? This is hefty. Stay organized, stay with me. Here we go. Because this is good to go, I'm going to move on to the next number that needs to change. What number is that? One. This needs to change to a what? Zero. To a zero. Here we go. When I'm changing to zero, I'm going to grab a different equation and add it to row two. Do you with me? So I'm trying to build a new row two. That means this one is not going to change, and this one is not going to change. I want to change the second row. And ultimately, I want this number to become zero. You with me? Yep. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to take negative row 1. You with me? And I'm going to add what to it? Row 2. Row two. So let's do some scratch work off to the side. A negative row 1 looks like this. Okay? And a row 2 looks like this. And when I add these two, what's the first number? Zero. Bam. That's exactly what I was looking for. That's why I did negative row one plus row two. What's the next number? Negative one and then negative one, negative 13. I have to start off a little slow because otherwise I would lose you like that. Because it is a little bit like, what's going on? This cancellation of zeros, you guys got to look at it a little carefully. All right, so this became that. Okay, now let's go through the road map again. Is that good? Yep, we just got the zero, that's good. Is this good? Yeah, so we're still good. Yes? Um, on the scratch work, if there's not negative, 
So a 3 plus, no worries, the 3 plus a negative 4 is going to become a negative 1. Yeah, but, uh, oh, wait, just so, okay, I thought we were supposed to keep that negative. Oh, no, 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 no. No, this is a very, very good question because it's a common mistake. When you do a negative row 1, it changes all those signs. We're trying to change this ultimately so that these are all 1 and these are all 0. And we're following the map. So let's keep going because we still have a long way to go. All right, so the next number that I'm looking at is this one right here. And I want to change it into a what? A 0. So here we go. Our goal is to change our row 3. So let me color coordinate it for you so that you can see it. Does row 1 or 2 change? No. So 1, 2, negative 3, 7, 0, negative 1, negative 1, and negative 13. That all stays the same. And my goal is to keep that a 0 and change this 2 to a what? To a 0. That's my goal. Okay? So here we go. Do you agree that I'm going to add row 3 to something? Yeah. What could it be? Negative. So here we go. I'm going to show you two ways. Because this is where the mistake starts to happen. If I add row 1, if I add row 1 to this right now, <coughs> would this number remain 0? No. You with me? It would not remain zero. And why am I going to undo something that I just did? I can't, I can't undo it, right? So I'm not going to add row one. I'm actually going to add row two. And watch real quick. Watch. I'm going to add row two. And the way that I'm going to change row two is I'm going to do two times row two. Watch my scratch work over here. 2 times row 2 will look like this. 0, negative 2, negative 2, negative 26. This is 2 times row 2. And I'm going to add row 3 to it. Okay, Row 3 is 0, 2, 1, and 3. And the most important thing that I want you to see right now is that we kept this as zero. And we also accomplished the next part by making this zero up here. So what are the last two numbers? Negative one, negative 23. suggestions out there on how to do that. Multiply it by a what? A negative, or a negative one on this, right? So I'm going to do a negative one times row two. Notice, guys, listen, this is big. Notice when I'm making things into one, I don't work with other equations. I work just with that row that I'm trying to change that into a one to. But when I'm adding, right? Then I'm working with other equations. Okay, here we go. So if I take a negative row 2, okay, nothing happened to the first row. We didn't even touch it. Nothing happened to the third row. We didn't even touch it. But you help me out. What do I get for the second row? 0, 1, 1, and 13. I hope the colors help you too, because when I learned this, it was on a chalkboard, and there were no colors, and it was hard to follow. What is going on? Okay, but the colors are there for a reason. Now, here we go. Got to check it as we go. Good, 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 good. Now I got to change this two into a what? A zero. A zero. So here we go. 
<clears throat> I know I'm going to end up adding something to row one to make this happen. Again, my goal is to make that two into a zero. You tell me, what could I do? Go ahead. I'm going to take a negative 2 and I'm going to multiply it by R2. Let's do some scratch work. And over here I'm going to have 0, negative 2, negative 2, and negative 26. And, and I'm going to add it to row 1. 1, 2, negative 3, and 7. What does this become? Right here? One, zero, negative five, because you're adding negatives, nice. And then what's the last one? Negative 19. So my new row one is one, zero, negative five, negative 19. Everything else stayed the same. Even though we used row two, we're trying to get zeros. Row 2 is not going to change. We're just using it to change row 1. Guys, we're almost there. Here we go. We are good, good, good. Whoops. So we are good, 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 good. That 5 has got to change. Okay? And we want this 5 to turn into a what? A 0. So I'm going to end up adding something to row 1 that will not only change this to 0, but keep. It will keep these as 1 and 0. I don't want to undo those. So what should I add? Negative 5 times R3. Nice. Let's do some scratch work. Negative 5 times R3 is 0, 0, positive 5, and a positive what? What's negative 5 and negative 23? No, 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 we're multiplying. Positive 115. That's negative 5 R3. And we're going to add it to row 1. 1, 0. Bless you. Negative 5, negative 19. And I get 1, 0, 0. There's, that's what I needed. And 96. So over here, my new row 1 is 1, 0, 0, 9, 6. Everything else stayed the same. Okay. Good, good. Oops, keep doing that. Good, 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 good. That needs to change. We need this. We have two more changes, guys, and we're done. Okay, two more changes, and we're done. Let me make some room for more scratch work. What do we want that number one to change to, guys? Zero. So we're going to end up changing row two. Okay? So if I end up changing row two, what could I add to row two to make that one turn into a zero? I could add row three. Just as it sits there all by itself. <clears throat> so I would have zero, one, zero, and what? Negative 10. Everything else stayed the same. And last but not least, what are we going to do? What are we going to multiply by a negative 1? The last row. So negative row 3 will end up becoming, we'll put a little arrow here. 
And I'm going to put it at the very, very top just so that you can all see it from the back of the room. Here we go. 10096, that didn't change. 010, negative 10, that didn't change. And finally, 001, 23. Look, there is your echelon. This is your reduced. So your x equals 96, your y equals negative 10, and your z equals 23. Otherwise, 96 comma negative 10 comma 23, <clears throat> that is your answer. If you can do this, I guarantee when you go back to study, you'll be able to do the other ones a lot easier. with the calculator. To check it, because you don't want to do all this work and not know the answer, we'll press menu 371. <clears throat> I'm going to change this to a 3. And you don't even have to go down there and put Z. It will do it automatically. Just change this to three equations and it pops up. Now look at my original matrix. You guys have it in your notes. My original matrix is this. And I want you to imagine <coughs> that these are x, y's and x, y, and z's. Okay? So the first one would be x plus what? 2y, Two Two y minus 3z equals equals what? 7. Seven. Now go down. Then that's what? x plus y minus 4z equals negative 6. Nice. And what's the last one? There you go. 2y. There's no x's. It's 0x. You don't have to write that down. 2y plus z equals 3. Look at this. 96, negative 10, 23, which is exactly what we got right there. The last way to check it that I will show you before we go on to our next example is going to be RREF. You have to type that one out. RREF parentheses. Press that matrix or sorry, press that button next to the 9 that has this menu drop down. 3 by 3. We're going to change it into a what? 3 by 4. So click down, delete, press 4, and just press enter. Don't try to scroll down to OK because it gets a little glitchy. And now, 1, 2, negative 3, 7. Just the problem the way you saw it. 1, 1. Remember, this is the augmented matrix, by the way. Augmented matrix, it means that there's just more added to it. And the last column that's added to it is that fourth column of constants. Okay? So if you play, I don't know, if you're in music, augmented um, chords and stuff, it's just an extra note added to it. So just think of it as an extra column. I'm thinking of guitar right now. Anyway, 0, 12, 1, and 3. There you go. This is your answer. Remember what this number 1 represented that I showed you from before. This number 1 right here tells us that there are how many answers to this thing. There's only one. Okay? Are we good, guys? Because I'm not even kidding you. This could be a nightmare to learn if you're not very careful and methodical with it, okay? And plus, I think the color coordinating helps a lot. <clears throat> Alright, so let's get back to it. It's all about choice. It's all about what did you decide to do, when and where, that will make this easier. Okay? Here we go. Let's see what you have. This one's more difficult because of your choices. Okay? What? How should I start? Someone help me out. Okay, so you got to get a 1 right here. Okay, so he's saying multiply by a negative 1 fifth. Don't write this down. Just watch. 
So if I multiply this by a negative one-fifth, my new row one will become what? One, four-fifths, negative three-fifths, and then eight-fifths. Everything else stay the same. Again, please don't write this down. You have one, zero, four, and zero. Three, negative five, five, and negative ten. Now here's what I'll say. We're going to do one more, and you're going to see why, and no worries, that this was a bad choice. But you need to learn from the bad choices, otherwise you're going to make a lot of them yourself. Okay? Now that this was accomplished, I need to make this number into a what? A zero. So how could I do that? Well, I'm going to add to row 2, because that's what I'm trying to change right now. I'm trying to change row two's 1 to become 0 to a what? To a negative row 1. Let's do some scratch work to the side. A negative row 1 is this. And I'm going to add it to row 2. The 0 was accomplished. Then I have negative 4 fits because I'm adding. And then I have 3 fits plus 4. I need to add by hand without a calculator. And I'm not saying be afraid of fractions and try to steer away from them. But you got to be good at this. Otherwise, it was a little bit more difficult for you. You with me? What do I need common before I add? Denominator. So I'm going to multiply by a form of 1. So that this is really 20 fifths plus 3 fifths to give me 23 fifths. You with me? And then I get negative 8 fifths. If I do it that way, do you see how it's going to get involved with fractions immediately? And there's nothing wrong with that, but if you struggle with fractions, maybe that was the bad choice. Okay, so let's go back. There's an easier way. What's the easiest way that you see that I can make that number into a 1? I could add 2 or 3 to it, so that adds 2 times this to give me a 6, and negative 5 plus 6 <coughs> would give you a positive 1. But there's something even easier than that. Just add 6 to the original. What was the last thing that we said in your notes? Check out your notes. What was the last thing that I told you to write that I even starred and said most people overlook it? Swapping. So check this out. I'm going to swap row 2 with any one, or sorry, row two with row one. So row one is going to swap with row two. You with me? So if I swap it immediately, one, zero, four, zero, negative five, <coughs> negative four, three, and negative eight, and everything else stayed the same. And now, done. We good? Okay. My goal now is to make this negative 5 into a what? Zero. Okay, so we're going to add something to row 2 to make that negative 5 become a zero. And you should start picking up a little bit of pace now in recognition so I don't have to go as slow. What am I going to add to row 2? Five, five, five times row 1. Okay. And if you need to do the scratch work, do it. 5 times row 1 would give me 5, 0, 20, and 0. Row 2 would be negative 5, negative 4, 3, negative 8. So that I would add those two together and get what? 0, negative 4, 23, and negative 8. That's my new row 2 just became.
Everything else, stay the same. change 3 to 0. So I'm going to add something to row 3. What is it? A negative 3 row 1. Again, let's do some scratch work. Negative 3 row 1 would be negative 3, 0, negative 12, 0. Row 3 would be a 3, negative 5, 5, negative 10, so that I got 0, negative 5, negative 7, and negative 10. Okay, so guys, when you run out of space, I want you to do this like on your quiz. Write a, a, um, an arrow, and then over here on your next row, just start right here. So row 3 became... 0, negative 5, negative 7, negative 10. Everything else stayed the same. Alright. What's the next number that needs to change? Negative 5. What does it need to change to? 0. So we're going to change negative 5 into 0 by something adding with row 3. Because row 3 is what I want to change. You with me? Alright, so what am I going to change in order to make this negative 5 happen? Because I wanted to go to 0, right? What could I do to make that 5 go to 0? You can't run away from fractions. Sometimes you will still have to do them. But what could I multiply? Which row do you think we're going to work with? Row 2. Now watch the way I do this. I'm going to take row 2's number, which is a negative 4, and I'm going to multiply it by something, you with me, in order to get what number am I trying to get? Positive 5. Because when I add whatever that number is to here, it zeroes out. So you ask yourself, 4 times some number gives me a positive 5, and if I solve for x, that number would be a negative 5 fourths. Okay? That's huge. These are the difficult, as difficult as they get. They don't get any more difficult than this. Okay? So here we go. Let's do some scratch work. Negative 5 fourths times row 2 would be 0, 5. What's negative 5 fourths times 23? So negative 5 fourths, here we go, 5 fourths times 23. The way I want you to do this, guys, is I want you to do it as improper fractions. Okay, don't, don't do mixed fractions. That's a nightmare, okay? So this is going to be over 1. Can you reduce 23 with 4? No. Can you reduce 5 with 4? No. If you could, I'd tell you to reduce right now and then multiply, but you can't. So now I'm going to just go ahead and straight, multiply, and I get what? 115? Isn't that 115? Negative 115 over 4. Okay? So negative 5 fourths is going to give me a 0, a 5, a negative 115 fourths. Here we go. Negative 5 fourths times a negative 8. Now look, I'm going to look at this as 8 over 1. Two negatives make a what? positive. So I know I'm going to have a positive answer. Now, some of you would say, and look at this, and you'd say 40 over 4. Yeah. Oh, that reduces to 10. What I want you to do is, I want you to reduce it at, as early as you can. 
for what we're doing for the rest of the year. I want you to see this and be like, ooh, I can reduce this to 2 over 1. So now all that I'm going to multiply is this 5, 2, 1, and 1, which is just 10. Okay? So the last number on this will be 10. Now let me highlight this for you because I don't want these fractions to intimidate you. This that we just did gave us that. And we're going to add it with row 3. And the reason why we want to do that is because our goal was to make the 0 pop up right here. Okay? Negative 1 15 fourths is going to add with 7. We go. Scratch work. Negative 1 15 fourths is going to add with negative 7 is the same as just subtracting 7. What must be common before you add or subtract? Denominators. So as far as this goes, to get a 4 to appear down here, I need to multiply by a form of what? 1. 4 over 4 is 1. And it's legal. I can do that because I can multiply anything by 1. It stays the same of what it's worth. So this becomes 28 over 4. So negative 115 minus 28 over 4 would be a what? Negative 1343? <coughs> a negative 143 over 4. And notice that I'm still going with these fractions. Just because we get fractions doesn't mean that it's going to be wrong per se. Okay? Alright. What was what will the last number be when I multiply or sorry, when I add them together? What would the last number become? Zero. Zero. So here we go. We just changed row three to become a new row 3 of 0, 0, negative 143 over 4, 0. <coughs> Everything else stays the same. The next change is going to be easy. Compared to what we just did, the next change is easy. What number we wanted to change? Negative 4. What do we want to change it to? A 1. So what is it that I'm going to do? No. Multiply by a negative 1 fourth. Right? So a negative 1 fourth row 2 will now make row 2 into 0, positive 1, negative 23 over 4. And what's negative 8? times a negative one-fourth. Two, positive two. Let me show you that. Eight times one-fourth <coughs> is the same as eight over one. We've got to get used to these multiplying, adding, subtracting fractions. This reduces to two over one. So all I'm left with is two times one over one times one. So I would get a positive two. Everything else stay the same. 1, 0, 4, 0, 0, 0, negative 1 43rd over 4, 0. All right, let me see if you know what we're doing. Change the 4. We have three changes left, guys, and we are done with this problem, okay? Three changes left. Right here. All right. I want to make this 4 turn into what number? 0. These last three are going to be the, the most challenging ones because we have weird fractions that we're going to be adding to this. Okay? So let me, let me see if it will allow me to do... 
think it will. I was trying to minimize it. Let me see if I can minimize it with my computer real quick. I'm running out of room. Yep, there it goes. make this 4 into a 0. That means I'm going to add something with row 1. Which row do you think we're going to add to row 1? Row 3. Nice. Because we want to keep that second column a 0. So we're going to change row 3 somehow. Check this out. We're going to multiply a negative 1 43rd over 4 by something in order to get what number in order for it to cancel with that? Negative 4. We're trying to get this to become a negative 4. You with me? Okay. So now, let's figure this out. How do I get rid of negative 1 43rds? 1 43 over 4. You multiply by the reciprocal. Over here, you multiply by the reciprocal. So that I get this cancels to 1, this cancels to 1, and these negatives become a positive x that stands all by itself. Okay, here we go. I'm multiplying this by 4 over 1. Ask yourself, can 4 reduce with 143? It can't. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply straight across because it couldn't and get a positive 16 over 143. This is what I'm going to multiply row 3, row three with in order to add to row 1. Y'all with me? All right, here we go. I'm about to do this right here in scratch work. So 16 over 143 times 0, still 0. Then we have another 0. And what's, one, what's negative 1 43rd times 16 over 4? A negative 4. If you don't see it, the 1 43rds cancel to a form of 1. The 16's reduced to 4 over 1, and it's still a negative. So this will become negative 4. And then the last one, 0. We're going to add row 1 to this. Again, this is my scratch work. So that you see, 1, 0, 0, 0 is now my new row 1. Do we agree? All right, so here we go. Row 1 will become 1, 0, 0, 0. <coughs> and everything else stayed the same. Okay, I think I said I said that wrong. Row three is what we're adding this to, right? Was that what your is that what your hand was up for? No, I was going to ask something about like since row three with like all zeros besides that number, can you pretty much like just change it to whatever you wanted, pretty much? Like with the term value, because since like every other one is zero, like because I know we did the inverse of it, but okay. So here we go. Here we go. Check this out. He's saying this four we want it to become zero. The only way we can do that is if we add. Yes. Okay. So you're going to add a different manipulation of a different row. You can't just divide this out by zero or whatever to make it into a zero, if that's what you're asking. Okay. So everything else stays the same. So negative 1 43rd over 4, and then this is zero. Guys, we're almost done. We have two left, and we're done. We're going to make, here we go, we're going to make... <coughs> this one become a zero. Go with me? We're going to make a negative 20 thirds over 4 become a zero. So that means we're going to add, since it's in row 2, 
we're going to end up adding something with row 2 to make this happen. Okay? Here we go. So the scratch work I have is this. What am I going to multiply with a negative 23 over 4? Or actually, look at it this way. What am I going to, what equation am I going to add to row 2? What equation will I end up adding to row 2? Row 3. Now you have to ask yourself, what manipulation of row 3? That means negative 1 43rds over 4 times something would end up giving me a what? A positive 23 over 4. Go with me? Because we want them to add and cancel to 0. So let's figure this out. If I multiply by what? Negative 4 over 143 you see that the cancellations of 1 and the positive just occurred. There we go. 23 over 4 times a negative 4 over 143. You see the force cancel. And you're left with what? Negative, yep, 23 over 143. This is what you're going to multiply it by. So negative 23 over 143 multiplied with row 3 will end up getting us to that number that we want, which is a positive 23 over 4. So scratch work. Scratch work for this right here is 0. Zero. Positive, or sorry, um, yeah, a positive twenty-three over four. And what's that last one? Just zero, right? Because we're multiplying it by row three. So this right here is what negative twenty-three over one forty-three multiplied with row three looks like. And we're going to add it with row 2. Adding all that, we get 0, 1, 0, 2. So my new row 2 is 0, 1, 0, 2. And everything else stayed the same. One more. The only number that needs to change now is what? The last, one. the last one. The negative 143 over 4. We want that to become what? 1. Okay, here we go. So if I have a negative 143 over 4 and I multiply it with something, I'm trying to get it to be a positive 1. What is that something? Negative 4 over 143. So you're going to say, the very, very last part, you're going to say negative 4 over 143 times row 3 would give me a new row 3 of 0, 0, 1, 0. 1, 0, 0, 0. 0, 1, 0, and 2. We finally got the echelon we were looking for. We finally have how many answers? 1. And our answer is x equals 0, y equals 2, and 0, 0 for z. Alright, real quick, follow me. I want you to check this to make sure that we're good to go. So put this in your calculator as row reduced. So REF parentheses, open up the matrix, 
three by four. And look what we get. What it does in just a click of a button But what we need to learn how to do to strengthen algebra skills, it gives us the answers. Questions? Um, could you, like, for the original matrix, just write out the like system of equations and plug that in and check it by hand? Yeah. Okay. No, you can check it by hand. You could also do this like negative 5x minus 4y plus 3z is equal to negative 8 so on and so forth, and do mini 371. Yes, let's say that this number, if it's not 1, Hannah, this number right here, if it's not 1, if it's something else, pick a number. 3. three. Let's say it's 3. Then ask yourself, are those two numbers equal? Is 3 equal to that 0? No. There should be no solution. But like whenever you're solving, you always try to get it to 1. You always try to get it to 1, but that's the thing. Sometimes you won't be able to get it to 1. Okay. But even, listen, but if you can't. Like, as far as the way it adds, mm, let's put it this way. Let me, let me, Stop the video because we're about to leave.